wonderful it is to see you all out here to be back in live worship. We're also going to be recording the service to be posted on YouTube and Facebook. We begin our service on this fifth Sunday in Lent with the Decalogue. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Lord, have mercy. You shall, have, you shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord, you shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Lord, have Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Lord, have Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have you shall not commit murder. Lord, have you shall not commit adultery. Lord, have you shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Hear ye, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The colic of the day, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write in it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, he will for truth be contingent, and will make you understand wisdom and secrets. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. May we hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken is made to grow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. You made me a clean heart, O God, and you knew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help, and sustain me with your bounty. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, and the one who is able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I know that the things look a little different to you from where we, the way we last worshipped indoors. The reason that we're using the lectern instead of the pulpit, we're trying to get everything recorded, make it easier not to have to move the uh, iPad around. So that's what we're going to just keep the same focus. We'll have all of the lessons and sermon and everything from the lectern from now on. And we're going to continue to have uh, worship posted on Facebook and YouTube. The phrase, Sir, we would see Jesus, which is found in this gospel, has been lifted out of that context and applied to pulpits all over the world. There are many places in this country and other places where a plaque has been set in the pulpit in those churches with those words, Sir, we would see Jesus. And the purpose of that plaque is for the preacher, not for the people to see it, but to remind the preacher that his job, her job, is not to talk about their vacation or their health issues, but to talk about Jesus and to eliminate Jesus and lift Jesus up for people to see him. That's kind of a wonderful thing, I think. A good reminder. There's an oddity in this gospel in that the, the Greek seeking Jesus never did get to see him. If you read carefully, uh, immediately after Philip and Andrew went to see, uh, to talk to Jesus, Jesus launched into his last public discourse, but he never did see the Greeks. Interesting. I want to share with you the message, which is a transliteration of the gospel by uh, Eugene Peterson. I find this very rich to read a slightly different translation to help us understand the gospel. There were some Greeks in town who had come up to worship at the feast. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip together told Jesus. Jesus answered, Time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to his life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If anyone wants to serve you, follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward anyone who serves me. The overall theme of this gospel is death. And a grim. It's death with an eye to what comes after Good Friday. It's a death, obviously acknowledging Jesus' death is coming, but also there's an eye to the resurrection and the ascension that will follow. It's the perfect gospel, really, for us to prepare for Holy Week. If a grain of wheat, a grain of wheat is useless unless it dies. It's a paradox. But we all know that's how things work in nature. Now, that's the scripture. I want to talk a little bit about the situation we find ourselves in, in the world today. Death is all around us. We had a grim reminder just this last week of that murder in Atlanta. A horrible racist act. No excuse for that. None. I couldn't believe that policeman said, well, he had a bad day. Yeah, he had a bad day. How about the families of the people who died? Our greatest hope in this time that we're living through right now is the vaccination that's going on in our nation right now. I feel fortunate I've been vaccinated with both vaccinations. I know many of you have also, and I pray that all of us will have them very soon. So the vaccination is the greatest hope for the near term. But Jesus is our greatest hope for the long term. Talking about myself, at age 76, I find myself a lot closer to the end of my life than the beginning. I'm slowing down. I'm aware of that. We all fear the unknown. And I think myself, I'm more curious than I am afraid, but I know that uh, 
is something I have to deal with coming up. But there's good news for me and for you. The good news for me is that I know that my Redeemer lives. And I will see Jesus. Sir, I will see Jesus. I invite you to stand and join me in affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God and through God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. <coughs> through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, <coughs> suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, have mercy. Let us see from above the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls. Praise the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, 
For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. A couple of announcements. Uh, we're going to be resuming distribution of communion today. So as you remember, you come right in front of that small table. I'll come down and put uh, a host in your hands with a pair of tweezers. And keep the six foot distance, please, between people as we do that. <coughs> um, also, I wanted to remind you, <coughs> excuse me, Holy Week will be somewhat abbreviated this year. We'll be having uh, 7 o'clock Monday, Thursday service live and 7 o'clock Good Friday service live. There will be no recording of those services. So uh, please come if you can. And uh, of course, next Sunday is. Palm Sunday. Uh, that'll be a little bit different also. We'll just have palms blessed in the library. <coughs> and then we're not going to process around like we usually do. We'll just have you come to your seats with the palm in your hand.
After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the Holy who is drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory to you as Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who have us against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Redemption one for us by your life, death, and resurrection. 
the body of Christ for better than the body of Christ for better heaven. Marry the body of Christ for better heaven. Compassion, O oh Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. In Christ our Lord. 